What gender am I? It's something many young people are now asking. The gender of my brain doesn't match up the gender of my biological sex. And it's become a deeply divisive issue. Divisions even among the young people receiving treatment. If I couldn't live my life as a male or have the body of a male, I honestly don't think I'd be around by the age of 20, 30. I had to stop the train. I was like, okay, this isn't right, what we're doing here. And immense pressure on the clinicians doing the treating. We can't ever be seen to be a service that can pronounce with great confidence about every young person who comes along. Nobody can do that. We're exploring the anxieties behind this debate. This is Leo. He's 16 years old and was born female. He now identifies as male. In my school, I'm pretty sure I'm the only trans person. Leo first came out as transgender at 11 years old. He began medical treatment two years ago, taking drugs to pause his female puberty. Recently, he began testosterone treatment, which does things like lower his voice and promotes hair growth. When I started uh, in my periods, uh, that was something that really it was an indicator of my parents that things weren't going to change, it wasn't a phase, because that worsened, you know, puberty worsened my mental health, worsened my gender dysphoria. When you're transgender, it's just different. It's, it's excruciating. The Gender Identity Development Service at the Tavistock is where children like Leo with gender dysphoria are treated on the NHS. That's when the body they're born with doesn't match their gender identity. Sky News research suggests 35 psychologists have resigned from the Children's Gender Service in London in the last three years. We've managed to contact 20 of them. Only six would speak to us. All six said they were concerned about giving hormone treatment to children with gender dysphoria. All six felt they weren't able to properly explore underlying psychological factors. Looking back, there are young people who I now wouldn't necessarily put on medication or sign off on medication. This was the only clinician prepared to be interviewed. They asked us to change their voice. I was once working with an executive that felt the gender dysphoria a young person was presenting with was really strong, really intense. So she decided to put the young person forward for the hormone blocking treatment after two appointments. Looking back, it was a young person with a history of trauma and direct trauma in terms of abuse. And also there were other things happening to them and this was not really explored by the clinician. These views were echoed by others who had worked at the clinic. Therapy is not an option in this service, one psychologist told us. We fear that we have had front row seats to a medical scandal, said another. This is Thomason. She's 19 years old and was born female. She previously identified as male, but detransitioned earlier this year. Thomason lived many of her teenage years as a boy and was referred to the Tavistock for treatment after reading about gender transition online. I thought, I didn't meet the requirements, so therefore I must not be a woman. I've got to be something else, because I'm not normal. Mainly the thing that was fueling me was that, it's just the fact that I didn't fit in and I didn't know anything. And then slowly was drip-fed this idea that you could change sex. I wanted to have hormones and be a man and have top surgery and be going down beaches and topless and whatever else it was and living my life out like that. The whistleblower says they saw many female-born patients with underlying issues, such as experiences of homophobia or even a history of abuse. The numbers started growing from 2012, when we started seeing more females coming forward, and this has happened across the Western world. And as a psychologist, did you ever feel that you could say to a parent, I don't believe your child is trans? No, and this is one of the reasons why I decided to leave the service, because as a psychologist, I felt that if I ever spoke to a family like this, I would immediately be called transphobic. It did feel scary at times, because you're going down this route of a medical pa medicalised pathway, and I did have those little niggles in the back of my mind. I was talking a lot of doubt, and I don't just mean, oh, I'm not sure, I mean, I'm so confused, my head is going to explode. 
A record number of young people are being referred to the Children's Gender Service at the Towerstock. There were just 77 patients referred here 10 years ago. By last year, the number had climbed to 2,590 children, the majority female at birth. And they've told us around 3,000 more children are on the waiting list. The clinic sees children under 18, some as young as three years old. Around half the children who come here are put on drugs at puberty to essentially pause their physical development. That would be the first step of any medical intervention. The next would be hormone treatment at 16 years old and any surgical procedures would only happen after they turned 18. Hello. Hello, Deb. We came to speak to senior clinician Bernadette Wren, who told us they fully inform children about the consequences of medical intervention in their teenage years. The work that we do to really inform these young people as fully as we can what this means to start taking, say, testosterone, in the example, uh, what that means for them physically, what are the irreversible impacts of that? What are the impacts on fertility? What are the possible, to consider the possible impacts on their sexuality, relationships in the future? Of the young people who've perhaps come to us and thought they'd like to review their decision, they, again, one or two, they have always said that they felt we have done everything that we could to make clear to them the, the gravity, really, of the choice that they're making. I'd have to talk in depth about my dysphoria. I'd have to, that I was asked questions uh, about my future and if I wanted to freeze my eggs, stuff like that, which as a 14 year old, 15 year old, is quite difficult to think about. And how did you answer that question? Personally, my view of it is that I didn't want to because the process I thought would have been uh, quite, quite difficult, I would have struggled because uh, I would have had to go on oestrogen so, which is obviously not something I wanted for a month, and then they would have this process of extracting the eggs and everything. Uh, and if I wanted kids in the future, which obviously I'm not certain about, um, but I, I could always adopt. Leo only had to wait seven months to be seen by the Tavistock, but the waiting list is now two years. The psychologist says it's putting immense pressure on the service. A junior clinician working full-time is expected to carry a caseload of 120 to 130 young people. Compared to child and adolescent mental health services, generic services where the equivalent would be 40 cases. At the moment, there's only one pathway through the service. It's a medical pathway, not a psychological one. But I wasn't aware of this when I joined the service as an enthusiastic LGBTQI ally. This is Luke. He's 17 years old and was also born female. He now identifies as male. Luke first came out as trans at 14 years old. And when we met, he'd been on the waiting list at the Tavistock for two years. Since his referral for treatment, it's been an agonizing wait. I was in such a bad place mentally that I told my mum that I, I can't go any longer. Like I'm like in pain and we were coming out from the GP and I kind of like started tearing up and like I, I told her like I can't go any longer and she started tearing up and we both started crying and then she told me that um, if, it, if it is what I need then we'll go privately. That was a turning point for Luke and he set up a phone consultation with a GP he found online. They prescribed him testosterone which he now applies as a cream. He's essentially changing his body himself. So how much did the phone consultation um, cost you? If I remember correctly, maybe like around 50 pounds. I think if you go for like the Skype call session, it's a bit more expensive. But um, every so often, every so often. So they didn't see you in person? No. And they prescribed you testosterone? Yes. It's an incredibly dangerous thing to buy any kind of medicines over the internet from a supplier of which you know nothing. It's not accredited in any way. We feel really anxious about young people doing that with or without their parents' consent. No one knows exactly how many children are buying hormones online and self-medicating, but step-by-step -step instructions on how to transition are easily available on the internet and social media. 
along with sites selling oestrogen and testosterone. There's no question gender dysphoria is causing concern and confusion for many young people and parents. But there's a crisis in the care available, a service overwhelmed with patients and teenagers trying to bypass the long wait for treatment. For many young people, gender is simply much more fluid. Children are being encouraged to express themselves outside of the binary male-female stereotypes. Much of the concern expressed to us isn't about whether people should transition or not. It's about the age at which they're medicalised. It's become a political and often fractious debate. Many of the people who approached us wanted their identities protecting for fear of criticism. And almost every expert we spoke to simply wasn't prepared to comment. The Tavistock say their levels of staff turnover are not unusual for child and adolescent mental health services. In a statement, they said, we have conducted exit interviews with all departing staff to understand their motivations and identify any areas of concern. The work is demanding and the pressures of operating in a busy service facing a high level of unfair criticism are intense. GIDS supports every young person on a case-by-case -case basis as an individual. For this generation, gender is a big conversation. I am becoming the best version of myself. I'm very happy because I'm finally becoming myself. The fight for personal identity now political. I don't fit in this. I don't like this. I don't want to be a man. A difficult journey for parents as well as children. We were struggling and he was the one putting his arm around me and saying, it's all right, mum, I don't expect you to get it straight away. So, yeah. <laughs> you must be very proud of me. <laughs> I am. Very proud. And experts on the NHS front line under immense pressure. We have a very long waiting list, which complicates everything about our engagement with these young people and the help we can offer them. The answer may be different for each child, but at young ages, many are facing big questions about the body they want for life.